My name is Vladimir Zivkovic, uh, team lead of FarmSlam. Uh, I was the producer on the project, and I was the game designer from time to time. Okay, hi, my name is Nino. Let me just set this a bit. Technology. <laughs> so I worked as a game designer for the most of development. Um, so what we want with this lecture is to show you our take on the well-known saying, fail faster. Uh, we will retell our design process and problem solving while we worked on match three free-to-play game Farm Slam, which was released globally this spring. Um, and we hope that from those mistakes we can share, uh, you can learn something and probably both and the whole community can learn from it. Thank you. Okay, so four years ago at this very place, our CEO, Mirko Topalski, uh, announced Apex's breakthrough in the free-to-play market. Uh, Apex at the time was working on a match three game called Free to Witch. After two years of development and 14 months of soft launch, the game was successfully launched on Big Fish Games' PC platform and remained in limbo on mobile. So nothing happened there. Uh, soon after, we started working on the project that we want to talk about today. The project is called FarmSlam. Okay, so what is FarmSlam? FarmSlam is a match three game developed by us and published by us. Uh, what's unique about the game is it's a blend of match three uh, farming uh, with the emphasis on grinding and replaying levels for greater rewards. FarmSlam had an unusually long development cycle of over two years. We made a lot of mistakes along the way, and we want to talk about those mistakes, as Nina mentioned. So, FarmSlam, during its development cycles, went through four main phases. So, first phase was called Farm Blast. Second phase, a mouthful called Drop and Crop. Third phase was called FarmSlam Publisher Edition. And last but not least, FarmSlam self-published edition. So, it's a lot of things to cover. Each phase has many good and bad decisions in design and whatever, but we're going to focus on the worst of the bad decisions here. So, we can learn something from our failures. Uh, okay, the first phase. What is Farm Blast? Uh, first version of FarmSlam game was called Farm Blast. Uh, at its very beginning, it was a mastery game uh, with a farm theme and a uh, estate building meta mechanic. So, uh, we were approached by our publisher to, at the time with a direction to build a prototype of a unique farm sim match three game. Uh, it was a hybrid of sorts. So, just a reminder, it was 2016, uh, beginning of 2016, match three hybrids were all the rage. Everybody was looking for a working formula at the time. So, Gardenscapes was just like beginning to soft launch, I think, at that time. So, it wasn't that like popular. They were also experimenting. Uh, so, yeah. Next thing, uh, led by the notion that we need to distinguish ourselves from other match three games, uh, we wanted to make a brand new, unique match three feature, the mechanic, never seen before, heavily inspired by uh, King's Pepper Panic, because at that time, Pepper Panic was still a thing, and people wanted to try and copy it. Uh, the idea behind the meta was to have it as a unique, separate gameplay feature that wouldn't gate the player in the match three phase, and it was supposed to be this decorative narrative part of the game. So, you see the pattern. There's like, we went full on uniqueness. Everything should be unique. That was the only rule um, and the bad rule. So, where did we fail? Game was too unique. Uh, we innovated uh, on the match tree design in the wrong direction by not understanding our players and the genre they loved we innovated in the wrong direction. By listening to our publisher on delivering something unique at all cost, we made a gameplay mechanic that was hard to understand. Um, so we acted like outsourcers towards our publisher. Uh, we uh, listened to every comment they gave us as like a godsend. So we need to fix everything that they comment on or it's not gonna work. Uh, we were trying so hard to satisfy their vision instead of working on that vision together with them. 
And we didn't do much market research. We were hoping that the publisher would do all the work on that. And we didn't understand the player base that we were developing for. So how could we have failed faster? We could have acted less like outsourcers and worked towards understanding the publisher's vision of being unique. We could have tested the match three mechanic with playtesters and built up a case why it's good or bad. Instead, the publisher took one look at it and he said, oh, this is bad, nobody's gonna understand it. And we were like, okay, cool, we're gonna delete it, fine. Uh, so then we were like stuck in design limbo, starting to copy all these other successful games. Whichever successful game would come out at that moment, we would jump on that like, ooh, this is gonna work. And the publisher was like that also, like, ooh, see this, this is gonna work. We're gonna we'll copy this. Um, so uh, we learned to always think about the player first. We can't make a unique game for the sake of being unique. Uh, if we know what the player wants from a certain genre, then we can innovate our that. Our publisher kind of understood that, and he was giving us good signals uh, of what to do and where to go, but we didn't get those single signals, singles, si <laughs> signals fast enough. And because of that, I think that's one of the main reasons that it failed. Okay, sorry, I'm just gonna give it word to Nino for the second phase. So, uh, Drop and Crop was second iteration of the game. After the publisher decided to pass on Farm Blast, we wanted to continue uh, to develop and publish the game by ourselves. We learned from the previous phase that too much innovation didn't give results, so we decided to take a more familiar match stream mechanic from other, other well-known and uh, played games, but to keep innovating on the metagame part. We really believed that Farm Sim Mastery Hybrid had its audience and that this idea was worth of further exploring. And so where did we fail in this phase? Being freed from our corporate overlords, uh, we went mad from power. Uh, we added a bunch of features because we were free to design anything. Literally anything. We wanted our game to have a deep and complex meta. At that time, Gardenscapes came out and has proved that this kind of match tree and building sim combination or hybrid works really well. So we thought, okay, this is the right direction. We should continue with that. And so we started developing that and starting double downing on meta and complexity or depth. We made a game with both farm map, where you would do maintenance and building, and small saga style maps for different regions. We wanted both. Uh, game had five different currencies, and as a main feature, we implemented this light gacha system with gifts. You could get gifts everywhere for completing levels, returning regularly to the game, uh, completing achievements, you name it. Uh, what was in these gifts? Everything. We wanted each gift opening to feel really rewarding and special for the, for the player, so we were trying to jam in anything that we could and that made sense with the design. So you would get hard currency, soft currency, uh, blueprints for, for building stuff on your farm. We had 15 different tools for corresponding debris on the, on the farm. You, you need one tool for one debris to remove, etc., etc. So, needless to say, this added another layer of complexity and made the game difficult to balance, as we learned during soft launch. Other thing that we also learned is that our player base didn't really care about that kind of depth and complexity. So, we missed that part all the way, like you said earlier. So, finally, the game was soft launch ready in March 2017. First, the data was promising. We had very good early retention, but the monetization was virtually non-existing. And there were so many things that could be wrong. Because systems were intertwined, it was really difficult to balance. Uh, but it seemed that we had a fun game players enjoyed, and so it was only for us at that time, it was only a matter of balance to make it monetize better, and we had a winner, right? So how could we have failed faster? 
We waited too long to have a perfect game to get it out and soft launch it. Failing to add features one at a time and test them even internally with ourselves not putting it out made the game a feature creep. Later on, we learned that it was very hard to balance, to figure out what players uh, are doing in the game, and etc. So what did we learn from this phase? We learned that you should add features really, really carefully and think about them and make them, um, add them one at a time, always one at a time, not a bunch of features in one run. So also important thing is to make systems as autonomous as they could be, not to jam everything everywhere. But also really important thing that we learned is when you have a design problem and want to add something, first consider removing something because usually there is something you can remove from your game that makes game imbalanced. So after a couple of months in soft launch and numerous iterations, we managed to get decent KPIs. Most of the time we were occupied with level balance and finding difficulty curve that worked well uh, with our game, both in terms of retention and monetization. This was going pretty well, and we were able to see changes, mostly improvement, from cohort to cohort. However, our Frankenstein-like metagame was too difficult to grasp, and players either didn't care or didn't get some of the features. So where did we fail? Since the publisher demanded to use their tools, we had uh, to plug out most of ours and to restructure the code. So we had, like, after the soft launch, another publisher came in and asked us, they were really excited about the game, and we decided to go with them because we didn't have that much experience in free-to-play mobile market. And they had both experience and UA money, so we decided, okay, let's, let's make risk lower for us and let's learn in this process of uh, publishing the game with them. And this was going really well because the game had really good KPIs in our soft launch prior to that. But, and it looked like, okay, we will need like one month or month and a half to pull our, our tool set and put in their tools for analytics and st stuff. And it was like home run, but it, it failed. Because um, since publisher demanded to use their tools, we had to plug out most, most of our tools and to restructure the code. From design point, we saw this as an opportunity to do finally rehaul and on, on meta game and to make it more simpler because lear we learned a lot in year and a half at, at that point of development. And we wanted to make them simple and easier to balance. And then that went well. Uh, the game remained the same, more or less, but we made system more autonomous and easier to balance. Gameplay changes were done fast, but um, tool integration and optimization, mostly on Android, made this process a nightmare. Making all those changes resulted in a delay of a couple of months. Design-wise, we were getting great feedback from publisher's game design team, and data started looking really good. At the point prior to global release, we managed to hit the KPI targets we had for the soft launch by the publisher, but this wasn't good enough. It was too late because in the meantime, Homescapes came out, and at that time, uh, CPI for, for match three games was really, really high. So uh, publisher decided to withdraw, and we got our game back. So how could we have failed faster, Nino? So yeah, we should have not used the tech that we used. We had a lot of problems integrating those tools, and because of the legacy tech that we used, it was a huge problem. And what we learned was that even the publishers didn't understand tech that well. All the publishers today are like, oh, we have a SDK for that. And when we ask them, is it a C++ SDK? They go, yeah, 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 it's, it's C++ SDK. Then we sign the contract, and then we get a Unity SDK. And it can't work. And then, three months after that, we're still struggling to implement the, their tools. And they don't have a senior tech guy uh, to answer all our questions and stuff like that. So that was a pretty, that was a nice nightmare. So 
what to learn. If you're talking to a publisher, please ask them what kind of uh, tech do they think you're using if you're not using Unity. Okay, so after that, we finally, we got our game back and we wanted to publish it ourselves. Uh, they gave us the game back. We were in a bad situation. We were burning money monthly and we just wanted to get the game out. We just wanted to see how it performs on its own. We, um, just to, you know, just boost morale and stuff. So where did we fail this time? We didn't fail. We didn't make any mistakes. We released the game, the game is out, it still is. It's UA positive. We started working on live ops, we started working on events, adding content and stuff like that. But as it says, it, it's a good product. Nothing more, nothing less. It didn't make any waves. We waited too long for everything to happen and we burnt out and we did, so now we're not sure what we did bad or good after two and a half years. Uh, yeah, the team was demoralized. A lot of people started leaving the company. A lot of our engineers started leaving the company that worked on that tech. So future bug fixes and porting to Amazon or I don't know, any other store was a nightmare and almost impossible. So how could we have failed faster? We should have launched Drop and Crop a year ago because a year ago it had similar results that it has today. But imagine that a year earlier. We would have all that experience uh, throughout the whole year. So the team would either have a successful game to work on or they would start working on another game and start fresh. And yeah, so here are some of our takeaways um, from this roller coaster ride of two years and four phases. Understand the market and the genre. You are develop you understand the market and the genre that you're developing for, especially if you're trying to innovate. Find ways to analyze both successful and flop games and see what the players want. So I think that the lecture before us kind of summed it all up, so we can skip that. Uh, learn to kill your features. So if something doesn't work, first question you should ask yourself is, what should I take out to make the game more accessible, to make it more fun? Because intuitively, we tend to add a lot of features because we're like, okay, the complexity will make it work at one point, right? And no, it never works like that. Test the game in all phases. Okay, probably the single most important thing we've learned is adding features one at a time. Testing it before they're pretty juicy or polished because when you see a player play your game, then you will understand how he interacts with that. We kind of get lost in all those character arcs, pretty art and pretty particle effects and stuff like that instead of thinking about what the player is going to experience while playing the game. Next thing is don't expect other people to fix the game for you. So you know your game. You spend the most time uh, with your game than any other person. So some outside consultant and stuff like that, it's all cool, they're, they know stuff and everything, but don't expect that they're gonna have a magic formula to fix it. You, uh, if you spent your time wisely in researching your player and your uh, market, you will have a good case against uh, why you design certain features like that. So, okay, the, I'm getting a message that's the end, so I just wanna say, uh, a lot of times, somebody from higher up would say, okay, let's change this, let's do that, but you need to know your game better than they do and explain why you changed something and why you want something in a certain way. Because all, if you don't do that, you're going to lose fate in your game and then you're just going to be a demoralized project lead. That's not fun. And yeah, that's it.